Hello and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to take you through the step-by-step -step process of creating visuals from your data using pivot tables and slicers in Microsoft Excel. If you look at the data in here, as you can see, it's a long list of items with less amount of interactivity and dynamics. But this dashboard, on the other hand, is very dynamic and interactive. For example, if we go and select only the team leader and team member number one, as you can see, all the information will be filtered out with these specific team members. In addition to this, if you select any type of the task status, for example, let's go and select the in-progress tasks, as you can see, the number of in-progress tasks for each team member and the total number of in-progress tasks will be shown in here, while doing the same job from this list would be a hectic work. So let's get started and let me show you how to create such dynamic dashboards using Microsoft Excel pivot tables and slicers. As you can see in here, we have a list of items where we have the activity names, the team member to who the activities are assigned, the percentage completed of each activity, and the status of each activity. So first thing is to convert this range into a table. In order to do so, you have to click inside the table anywhere and press Ctrl plus T. Make sure to check this spot if you have headers in your table, then click OK. Once your, table, once your table is generated, summarize the table with the pivot table. So we will insert the pivot table in a new worksheet and click OK. And here, the, the two things that we need in here is the team member names and the number of activities assigned to each of the team members. We don't need the grand total in here, so I'll go to options from here. In the options, I'll go to total and filters. I will uncheck these two parts and click OK. Next thing is to insert the pivot chart for this one. The type of pivot chart that we will insert is a bar chart for the data in here and click OK. Next thing is to remove the buttons from here. So in order to do so, go to field buttons and we'll go to hide all. You can change the title from here. We will write down tasks per team member and we'll remove the legend from here. Uh, in addition to this, as you can see, the team member names are in descending order. In order to make them in ascending order, right click format axis. From here, we will select categories in reverse order and close this one. I'll remove the axis labels from here. So this will be our first chart which we will need for a dashboard. If you want to add, for example, other things such as the data labels, we can click in here and go to inside end. As you can see, we will have our data labels. We can further format them, their size, their text style, and everything as well. But for the sake of this video, this amount is enough. So I'll create a new sheet in here uh, which will be our dashboard. So I'll write down dashboard number two since we have one dashboard already. S two sheets cannot be the same name at the same time. So I'll copy this one from here and I'll paste it in the dashboard sheet. Make it a bit smaller and uh, sorry, I'll bring it down here. And for the next one, we have the number of tasks based on their status. So for that purpose, again, I'll go to our data sheet in here, data number two, uh, and in here, I'll go to table tools, summarize with pivot table, new worksheet. And here we will have the status and the number of activities should be in the values. As you can see, we have two activities which are completed and 10 activities are in progress, three activities are not started yet. In the options, what I will do is I'll remove 
the grand totals from both rows and columns. So the next thing in here again, uh, the same thing that we did for the previous one, we will insert the donut chart for this one and click OK. You can add the data labels and everything, the chart uh, title and everything as you, as you wish. So I'll copy this one. I'll remove the buttons from here. First of all, I'll go to field buttons. I'll hide them all. Uh, so this amount of formatting will be sufficient for now. Uh, I'll copy this one and uh, take it to a dashboard number two, to this sheet in here. The next thing in here is to insert slicers for this. So I'll click any of the charts in here. I'll go to Pivot Chart Tools. In the Analyze, we'll insert a slicer for this. The first slicer should be to the, uh, the team member names. And the second should be the status. I'll click OK in here. So I have already defined a slicer style in here. In the other videos of the YouTube channel, of this YouTube channel, you can find how to format your uh, slicers. I will put the link to these videos under the description of this video. So as you can see, this slicer is only working for this one chart and it, uh, the other chart remains untouched and everything remains the same. In order for the slicer to work for both of the charts, what I will do is go to report connections and I'll co connect it to the pivot table number two. I'll connect this slicers to pivot number two, pivot table number two as well and click OK. Now in here, if you click the team leader only, the number of the tasks assigned to the team leader will be shown in here. And for example, go to team member number two. The total tasks are shown in here, the number of tasks which are completed, the number of tasks which are in progress and not started will be shown in here as well. I hope you found the content of the video helpful. If you did so, consider subscribing to this YouTube channel and following us on Instagram and LinkedIn. Thank you very much for watching.